Yes, thank you so much for joining me. I have loved reading your book. Um, I thought it was so interesting and fascinating to me. Have you um, all got my book now? Yes, yes, yes. I've got a PDF of it in advance. Okay. Could you tell us a little bit about your story and um, your story of how you came to become a monk and, and leave Tibet? Could you share a little bit of that with us? If you read my book, but I'll repeat this again. Uh, in your uh, part of the uh, world, I am very uh, backward and a primitive human being because where I was born, you can see also in the book, the village I was born, it only happened to be 12 family. And it's very deep inside the camp, quite forest, mountains everywhere, and the forest uh, between two big rivers. When they meet together, go down to China, and they meet the uh, Yukon River. It's a massive river, and it's a very mild climate. But when the Chinese came, they cut up all the big trees which had been there for thousands of years old. So in the picture, you won't see those uh, big trees. But when, uh, uh, in that part of the world, because there was no road uh, of any kind, people never go out from their uh, little uh, sort of uh, safe place. And they even never bothered no anybody outside. So it's the 1959, the, uh, the Chinese force have taken over uh, our part of the world. If you see called, if you look into now called capital of Kham, called Chamdo, it's a massive built up, very big building, like almost like European city. I'm only five, 15 kilometers from that. And then gradually going to my brother's monastery, learning from him, very strong. He was a very strong regime because he was the head of a monastery. So when I grow up, I'll be helping him to run the monastery. So young people are very highly disciplined because they themselves have <coughs> no wisdom to put up uh, effort to, to learn things. So it was very tough and I have never appreciated that. And also where his monasteries, if you look into Koltsawa Domalakan, one of the highest place in Tibetan plateau, is it 15,000? 15,000 feet. Yes, it's 15,000 above sea level. So it has no tree, can't grow any trees. And always it's a very barren land, but Tibet is a very massive country. So it's like, as far as you can see, you can see Plato. And then there's a massive uh, snow mountain behind the monastery called Kulakonga. So then there's also many wild animals running around because llamas never kill them. Uh, llamas become the environmentalist means nobody else can kill them. So they're very free to run around. And then at 59, when we are forced out of this, uh, we have to uh, then leave everything we have. Uh, I have never met my family and we have to run uh, towards Lhasa because we think that's where Dalai Lama used to be. We think it would be a safe place to go there. But as soon as we are more or less uh, closer to there, then this is the Lelam has escaped to India. So then we have to uh, turn backward. The only way is when we escaped is almost very close to Marma, uh, Brahmaputra River. So in India now it's called Assam. Brahmaputra River is one of the biggest, longest river in from Tibet, uh, coming from Tibet, it goes all the way from there to uh, uh, India, through Bangladesh. So that we follow the uh, toward that river. But due to somehow Chinese knowledge of us escaping, uh, we have to cross in the night 
in the kayak made by very small leather kayak. It's only take four or five people. And we crossing the, because it's very light to carry. And we have to cross in the night because daytime it's impossible. That area is already uh, liberated by Chinese. So they will never be, we will never be able to escape. Uh, so the uh, only way is to uh, cross the night. But in the beginning, because we have a very high uh, Rinpoche, we call precious lamas from five different monasteries. Then these five Rinpoches, and I'm the youngest brother of Rinpoche, and one of the lamas uh, attendant, we are the first one to cross. But we thought we crossed. And then my brother and other people went back to others. The Chinese start to shoot us. And then I was so young and I never actually confronted guns and the people shooting. But this uh, high lama's attendant, he come from very far away from Kham. He knows. He says, now we really have to uh, escape for our life. Chinese uh, uh, shooting us. So they will be ca carrying uh, like 11, uh, Tungba means uh, 11 century relics, very precious. He divided two, one put on my neck, one he took. Then he took my hand. We start cross this, but we didn't know there is another uh, sort of place with this plenty of water. We didn't see this before. So it's the middle of winter, very, very cold. We have to cross this. So I'm wearing very, uh, you know, lamp skin coat. That's what we wear. So went, water went almost up there, we cross. And then as soon as we got out there, we have to go into like head side of uh, head mountain. Here, snow everywhere, so cold. But if you're so terrified of uh, death and Chinese, we never managed to die. So few of us went up there to hide under the big, big old trees, a trunk. And then Chinese are shooting everywhere, going everywhere. And then out of 300, uh, only 15 people escaped. Remaining, they caught everybody. That's one of my oldest brother. He was also caught. And then they take him to a camp and they, they tied it every uh, man uh, back. And the women are saying, you people should go and beg some provision. And this man, all of you have to go to build motor uh, road for Chinese, force labor, and they have to look after themselves, they want to feed you. If you really watch, emotion is all repetition. I call, uh, we call, uh, I call spinning wheel. You know, the engine is not running, but the wheel is running. So most people get so emotional going to the past, all the bad experience they had, or they trying to uh, uh, sort of get hold onto good experience. Same thing again, same thing again, same thing again. There is no meaning. Then some get stress, you bring the future suffering. So you have no clue what is waiting for you. You have no clue tomorrow whether you'll be wake up alive or dead. Still, you manage to think all your planning. So in your culture, language says you have to plan everything. You can never plan. All of your plans say you plan to get, find a nice partner, thinking it will be the uh, life you want to lead, the very nice partner, no problem, having nice children, it doesn't happen with choices. It's very few find that dreaming partner. <laughs> but even you get the 
very soon your monkey mind is so uh, bored so easily you're looking faults instead of quality you saw in the beginning so when you start to look other people's fault you get into a lot of problem but my method to all of your listeners is when they sit too long when you have no control over your mind having plenty of time is a disaster because then you get in the difficult so what i suggest is if you are locked in you have plenty of time pick up new habit if your neighbor if your land start to do gardening planting uh, your need for food go jogging when you really jog they tell you not thinking of the silly things always think when will i be free from this uh, emotional disturbance the day you manage to think others more than yourself your problems gone forever it's me i my likeness my need i'm happy i'm not happy it's i i i i is the root of every human being's problem there's no eastern i or western i i is a root so if you look inwardly okay this i is causing so much failure disturbance i look inwardly and investigate where is this i the minute you look inwardly you will never find this i there isn't anything called the i then you will start to really uh, dismantle this solidity of i so even if we are very learned in culture religion all the dharma text these people will not have enlightenment who will have enlightenment or who become buddha means a people who are able to look inwardly never in the past never in the future if you stay in the moment that is called buddha there isn't buddha out there solid body form so the minute we lose that then you're going back to samsara you're going into spinning so if you do a lot of uh, years uh, like routine like me then i can see meaningless of this repeating again repeating again a same thing there's nothing new so i start to feel really sort of giggly thinking what's so stupid <laughs> there is anything we need to be uh, worried because there isn't anything to chase so you all out there learn to be in the present not in the past not in the future present five second try again one more second three more second it's like block building new habit building so gradually you feel more joyful you feel more confident you feel self respect you feel really a lot of uh, compassion towards those people who have everything still they are miserable human beings if you say okay we are thinking people who are billionaire millionaire whoever everything they should be happy they are the most lonely most miserable human being you ever see that should teach you money isn't the one which make you happy relationship isn't what makes you happy because they are all impermanent means nature is changing constantly all the time sometimes you're happy with your partner sometimes you're not happy with the partner wealth sometimes it become useful sometimes it bring you downfall nowadays 
it should be, we call interconnectedness of the world around us. This disease has no respect to wealthy people. It is very discriminating every life form in this planet Earth. We have to suffer. Why? Human beings violated all the rules of the, uh, we call, ecosystem. We abused Mother Earth. We have been good in abusing each other. We have been uh, uh, plundering the resources of Earth, polluting river, and also rich becomes greedy and greedy, and they have a never satisfaction. Poorer become poorer. They don't have a plate in the food. They don't have a clean water to drink. All these plastic bags, all these pollutants in the river, river, sea, it is killing a lot of uh, wild lives. But due to this disease, there is a side benefit. I was told ozonia is much more cleaner than ever before. Not people are able to travel in cheap, silly aeroplane, which is responsible for all this uh, uh, disaster. So I echo you, future of a whole world will be changed for better. We'll be needing less, wanting less. Everybody learn to take care of each other. Like these times, there are so many decent human beings. Those nurses, they give their life to save other life. That is called part of Bodhisattva. So there are so many decent lives. So I would like everybody who's listening to me involving environment uh, improvement, like Samyeli. Every bit of land I have, I've been planting trees. My Sanghas saying they're happy to go and plant the trees anyway, wherever there's opportunity. I have a major project in Cedar Peak, very major project, eco project, which is about uh, two hours from Cape Town, from South Africa. It's the most beautiful, it's the most unpolluted. 800,000 uh, 8, 8, hectares of prime site on the mountain top. I managed to uh, ask these five wealthy sisters, their family been there a long time and they made a fortune, so they bought this. So I managed to ask them to dedicate this for uh, uh, world heritage, for environment. I want every human being think less of I, think more of others. We will from now on restore the environment. We will cleanse in the sea. So I have many young people. Uh, I always say, you are my joyful representative. Really smart young people. They're going to look into see how they can clean all the sea, under, under the sea. So they can tide it up and all this pollution. There's two, three young people they say that's their commitment. So I am sending three layers of different people. Some very young ones say, you're my joyful representative. Mm -hmm. Joyful, follow the path of joyful, forgiveness, gratitude, compassion, nothing can go wrong. A lot of people um, that I have met really want to meditate, but find meditation very difficult. What advice do you have for people? All of you are very wrong. Uh, people who are trying to meditate, there's no benefit. You're trying to calm your mind. Calming mind, yes, if you have no other challenge, you may find some calmness. But the minute stress, anger, emotion, that is gone. But if you're able to say, actually, 
calmness is fine. If you have a karma means you have a better like clear foundation, like less scattered clouds. Then you have to come into the being in the present. When you're in the present, nothing to push, nothing to bring in. This is total, total solution. So use sometimes calm mind, but then work with the calm mind, how to become good person, how to become kind person. Make sure you don't discriminate, say, this is my family, they're my enemy. There is no enemy in the world. Enemies are our own ignorant. So the minute you think in enemy, you say they're your stupidity. You judged. Mm, I think there's a lot of that at the moment. We even sometimes with our friends, we can see them as the enemy with people having different political beliefs or different beliefs about um, what's what the government are doing or what's happening with COVID. And I'm seeing a lot of people really making each other the enemy, but we need to remember. So you need to say to them, uh, with clear head, you will find a solution. With skated mind, you join with skated people. Your contribution, your interest does not aid for change of the world better, but you make world things better. So see, my group, that group, this group is right, that group is wrong because you're judged. So you can see no judgment means if you don't judge, forgiveness is something not in your religion, not in your culture, tradition. That's the biggest Christianity fault. So we say Tibetan five poisons. We add unforgiveness, another poison, because when you don't forgive, you can never be free from dark frame of mind. You think, okay, I like these people very much, but he or she did something. I can never forget more. I escaped from Tibet. They tortured my father. They have done so much harm to our family, but we learn to forgive all the Chinese people because Chinese people are not fault policy of ignorant people on the top. I think after finishing this, I'll ask Lam Anislam to give you a, a program made a long time ago. You watch this, then you can see how independent mind, mind of a very primitive Tibetan mother sent beings. They are able to rebel against all these thousands of Chinese soldiers marching. 15,000 women in Lhasa come out without nobody organizing to say, you go home, this is our country. They have no fear. Yes, they say, you go home. And one of these Kamba, he's a Kamba, he's very stubborn, tough woman. They caught her there and they take her back to a calm. 300 of them are put in prison for it was 28, years. 28 years. The more they give them a hard time, the more they become joyful. They be singing songs, but he said, she was angry woman. Really, she was so angry. But then uh, when she came to Dharamsala to opportunity to see His Holiness Dalai Lama, His Holiness three years walking home saying, mother, don't get anger. Anger doesn't free you. Anger make very unhappy woman. When you learn to, uh, give up the anger, you'll be most joyful, fulfilled human being. She succeeded this, and I think you should watch this. That's the most beautiful. This is all Tibetan women's talking, how independent mind they have. Nobody told them to do this. They don't blame anybody. Thank you so much for everything that you've shared.
I have said enough. And if anybody like ask you any specific questions, you send me short email, my secretary will answer you. That's great. Thank you so much for talking to me and sharing I your story. Always to help mother sending beings. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh,